Hello, Gold Derby fans. I'm uh, editor Daniel Montgomery here with uh, my colleagues, Marcus James Dixon and Robert Lecuria. We are going to talk about the drama categories at the Emmys, um, where the crown leads the nominations with 24 uh, out of all shows. Uh, uh, Mandalorian also has 24, I believe, if I remember correctly. Uh, my brain is scrambled from this crazy Emmy season. Um, and also in drama series, you've got The Handmaid's Tale, Pose, Bridgerton, Lovecraft Country, The Boys, and This Is Us. Uh, so those are the eight nominees. The Crown has been kind of on a roll uh, through the Golden Globes, Critics' Choice Awards, PGA Awards, DGA Awards, Writers. Like it's it's been kind of a romp for that show. Uh, is it is it just going to win Best Drama Series, which would actually make it the first Best Drama Series for Netflix in in its history? Uh, what do you think, Rob? Yeah, I do. I think um, I think it's almost a fait complete. I just think like the crown has been on a roll. Everybody's really um, uh, loved season four, its strongest season to date. I honestly believe a lot of that has to do with Emma Corrin and Julian Anderson and their uncanny performances. But the writing, just everything about the crown season four was so wonderful. It's going to win, and if anything is ever going to um, upset it, it, to me, it would be The Handmaid's Tale, which had an extremely strong season four as well. There must be something about the number four this season that has really brought those two shows completely out and and made them the best of the year so far. Uh, what do you think, Marcus? I agree with everything Rob just said, including the fact that this is the best season of The Crown there's ever been. And I've always liked The Crown. I've appreciated it. It's, it's beautiful to, to look at. But this season, maybe it was Gillian Anderson. I don't know what it was, but I just fell in love with the show this year. And I think it's going to win. I think it's like a 99% chance that it's going to win. I do have Handmaid's Tale in second place, which it got 21 nominations, which is just so impressive considering, I don't think last year did very well. No, last year no. it didn't do that well. It was it was really on a downswing last season. Not it 10. got uh, 10 or 11, uh, yeah. yeah. And it was way down from previous season. Like, oh yeah, I think it got 10 because the previous year it got 11 for just uh, like literally three orphaned yeah. episodes. And so yeah. it seemed like it was kind of the beginning of the end for Handmaid's Tale at the Emmys, and, but nope back up in in you know 20 plus Amazing. i also I, I like i like pose a lot i like bridgerton i mean the boys was my favorite show of of 2020 what year did it come out yeah um, that's a great this is a, what is time <laughs> what is this time? Is a really strong category and any show that wins deserves it but i think the crown is going to win yeah i i, I agree with all that i have the crown followed by handmaid's tale i'm not ruling out the mandalorian because it's not just uh a tech show it did get uh directing i believe uh and or writing um it got uh uh you know acting nominations so it's it's not just strictly uh based on the tech so i think that's definitely possible but i think the crown gets it and i'm worried about the crown jinx just because and the netflix jinx because whenever netflix has seemed like they're out front in a series category something ambushes them to take it down uh and the crown is in its fourth season it's like why would a show in its fourth season finally win well it's because the crown has the unique benefit of basically rebooting itself every year or two with a new cast playing the characters and in this case uh in season four olivia coleman is still playing the queen but uh, it introduced Emma Corrin, Josh O'Connor's role uh, became much more substantial. Gillian Anderson came on. So it's, it's basically almost like a first or second year show. Mm -hmm. um, Daniel, the, can I just um, follow up what you just said very um, astutely, I might add, and that's The Mandalorian has two writing and one directing nomination. The Mandalorian cannot be just uh, dismissed as a tech show. It's also got acting uh, nominations in the guest categories. Um, and in supporting so like we need to be aware that if there is a Netflix curse and God help me I don't know what's going on with Netflix and, and big awards and series prizes but the Mandalorian is certainly up there and I also just wanted to put that to mention that Pose got everything that it needed to get as well directing writing actress and actor so Pose is is on its way out what a great achievement for Ryan Murphy and the team to get that show back in a drama series because that was incredible as well season three so this is a really interesting category but the crown of course as you both have said so rightly is just so well in front yeah I, I can I can feel us after the creative arts awards where the Mandalorian is probably going to have one, one of the biggest totals or the biggest total coming out of creative arts. And we're gonna be wondering, what does that mean for drama series? Uh, we're, I, I feel like we're all gonna start second guessing ourselves. I probably will, uh, depending on what it wins. Um, but for now, it looks the like crown. the crown. 
no matter what happens at Creative Arts, I'm sticking with the crown. The crown's probably going to win a few Creative Arts. That that's probably true, yeah. Um, uh, but it'll probably win more in prime time, um, and you know. With that said, let's move on to Best Drama Actress, where we've got Emma Corrin, who has also been on a roll this past season for The Crown, uh, Olivia Coleman also for The Crown, Elizabeth Moss, past winner for Handmaid's Tale, MJ Rodriguez, historic first transgender lead acting nominee in Emmy history for Pose, uh, Journey Smollett for Lovecraft Country, who I love, uh, and Uzo Aduba for In Treatment, three-time Emmy winner. She's never won as a lead. She's sort of like the Jean Smart of drama. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm I'm predicting Emma Corrin just because she's, you know, we've been she, she's been on a roll. Um, the Crown is cleaning up. She's got a potential vote split, but that hasn't hurt her anywhere. She's been nominated up against uh, Olivia Coleman. What do you think, Marcus? Yeah, Emma keeps winning everything. She's the smart bet. If I was a voter, I would vote for MJ Rodriguez, not just for the the historical aspect of it, but because she was. For my money, she was the best actress on television this year. Um, and gosh, that finale, I think that's the one she submitted. It is, she, yeah. She's front and center. She's in almost every scene. She is crying and laughing. And that is what should win an Emmy. But I am going with Emma Corrin. It's hard to go against a front runner if you don't have a really strong reason to. And so I'm sticking with her. How about you, Rob? Um, at the moment, as I mentioned in a previous slugfest, I'm going with Elizabeth Moss, um, mm -hmm. but I will probably change it at the end and go with the safe bet, which is Emma Corrin. Um, it's undeniable that her performance as uh, Lady Diana was just out of this world. But Elizabeth Moss, I just think sometimes uh, people underestimate her. She was phenomenal in season four of The Handmaid's Tale absolutely blew me away um, and not only as an actor but also just for what she brings to that show and to that set from what I'm hearing but then MJ Rodriguez as Marcus mentioned I mean wow what an incredible performance so heartbreaking and then I'm I, I, an Uzo Aduba as well in the in treatment episodes that I've seen incredible performance same goes with Journey Smollett but I must say Olivia Coleman sometimes is also underestimated because uh, you know Julian Anderson and Emma Curran have taken a lot of the spotlight this season Olivia Coleman in so, in so many of her scenes is so beautifully nuanced as the queen. Uh, I'm just, I, I'm going to miss her so much. I thought she was amazing. So this category is really stacked. And so they've, I still think Emma Curran has it, but I'm going with Elizabeth Moss just for now, just to be controversial, because I just want people to realise that in any other year, Elizabeth Moss would just win this hands down. She was just out of this world. Yeah, it's really interesting if Emma Corrin wins. Uh, the, the three youngest drama actress winners will have come in the last three years. Uh, uh, Jodie Comer was 26, uh, and she set the record two years ago for Killing Eve. Zendaya uh, upset last year. She won at 24. Emma Corrin is 25. Uh, uh, so she wouldn't quite break the record, but she'd be, she'd be damn near close to it. Um, so wow. uh, it, it would certainly be fitting with the trajectory of this category uh, for Emma Corrin to win it. Um, let's move on to Best Drama Actor, uh, where I believe Josh O'Connor, uh, who is, I believe, the current front runner for The Crown, would also be the youngest winner in that category at 31. Um, so uh, he is nominated against uh, past winner Billy Porter for Pose, uh, Reggae Jean Page for Bridgerton, past winner Sterling K. Brown for This Is Us, past winner Matthew Reese for Perry Mason, and another Emmy rookie, Jonathan Majors for Lovecraft Country. I feel like of the crown front runners, Josh O'Connor might be the softest because I feel like youth is hurts men in the eyes of like the industry more than it hurts women. Um, and I feel, so I'm, I'm going out on a limb sort of, it's not even that big a limb because he's won already. Uh, I'm going with Billy Porter for the time being. Uh, what do you think, Rob? Yeah, it's a good call. I think Billy Porter has a lot of strength in his category. He was just like, there's no words to describe the performance that he gave in Pose. And anyone, by the way, who hasn't seen his interview with Tony Ruiz for Gold Derby, you should check it out because he's just such an impressive person. However, I think Josh O'Connor still has this. I just think um, his performance as Prince Charles to me was just um, really revelatory. He's, I was not really aware of him before he, he took on the role as Prince Charles. And now I'm, I think he's just such an impressive actor. I think the TV Academy will feel the same way. I think um, he has this in the bag, actually. I, I really don't see it being a contest. I, think, I disagree. 
I completely disagree. I mean, his, his character is, is more quiet and more subdued, not a lot of emotions, no plate throwing scenes. And those are typically, you know, the over the top antics is typically what wins Emmys and that would be Billy Porter. I yeah, Billy not, Porter throws some plates. <laughs> oh yeah. I am not quite bold enough to predict Billy Porter at this second in time, but I mean, what you mentioned about the interview he did with Tony, he went on a lot of, inter he went on a whole interview train. Every website, you know, talks to this, this actor and I think that could help. Whereas Josh was more quiet. I didn't see a lot of Josh interviews. I'm sure he did a couple, you know, spread out, but I think that helps. I think campaigning does help. Um, plus, you know, everything I said about MJ in the finale, Billy also has great moments in the finale. And uh, spoiler alert, something happens to him. I'm not even gonna say, even though I said spoiler alert, I'm not gonna spoil. Um, but so Billy is the one I think I will end up predicting before the Emmys. But right now I'm going with Josh. Um, so let's go on to drama supporting actress. Uh, this feels like maybe a, a bigger slam dunk than either of the lead categories for me, uh, Gillian Anderson, The Crown, um, which it's weird to think that she hasn't won an Emmy since the one time she won for the X-Files more than 20 years ago. Um, but she's nominated against uh, 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 her, her co-stars from The Crown, Helen the Bottom Carter and Emerald Fennell. And then you've got four Handmaid's Tale nominees, Madeline Brewer, Ann Dowd, Yvonne Strahovski and Samira Wiley. And then the only person who is the lone nominee who I'm, who I, I'm, I'm wondering, maybe, maybe could this happen? Anjanu Ellis for Lovecraft Country, who is phenomenal on Lovecraft Country. I'm so happy for her nomination, uh, but I am predicting Gillian Anderson. I think it's it's another one of those cases. She's up against two co-stars. I can't see either Helena Bonham Carter or Emerald Fennell taking enough support away from her to keep her from winning. Uh, what do you think, Marcus? Um, I think Anjanu Ellis should be up against a co-star. I think Wumi Musaku should I agree. be nominated here. Yeah, but you're right that she's not. Um, I think it's Gillian Anderson. Uh, everyone knows how much I love her, and th this is the performance of the year for me on the female side. Jillian Anderson killed it every episode she was in, and you know she's up against two co-stars. But this is this is not a vote split because there's such a you know she's so far in the lead. Um, Rob, what do you think? Because we interviewed Jillian together. Is that yeah. influencing me or is this? Just it's not influencing you. I know that you and I are both really. I did not interview Jillian Anderson and I'm and predicting you, her, so uh, we're good. Yeah, yeah. I think we, obviously we're all fans of hers, uh, but that doesn't matter because I mean, her performance as Margaret Thatcher is, was so, I, I, there are no, I'm trying not to be too hyperbolic, but I've never seen anything that really affected me like that one did. It really, um, it, it opened my eyes to the, the character, of the, the persona of Margaret Thatcher, even though this is a fictional TV series and her performance just blew me away. And it's the performance of the year, male, female, um, gender, non-binary. She is it. She is the best thing I've ever seen um, in a very long time. And I sound hyperbolic, but I mean it. She is winning this without a doubt. Unfortunately for really great performances like Yvonne Strahovski and Anne Dowd and Samira Wiley in particular, they were phenomenal in The Handmaid's Tale as well, but let, we, we should just move on. This is Gillian's without any shadow of a doubt in my mind. And move on we shall, because I feel like drama supporting actor is the closest of all of the uh, drama regular races. Uh, I could make a case honestly for four or five of these uh, actors at least. Uh, uh, they are Michael K. Williams from Lovecraft Country, Tobias Menzies from The Crown, Bradley Whitford, uh, uh, O.T. Fag Benley, and Max Minghella from The Handmaid's Tale, John Lithgow for Perry Mason, Giancarlo Esposito for The Mandalorian, and Chris Sullivan for This Is Us. I think I got them all in. <laughs> all eight nominees. I'm predicting Michael K. Williams. He is the I feel like he's a soft front runner, uh, but I'm, I'm encouraged by how well Lovecraft Country did in the nominations overall, better than I feared that it might because it aired a year ago and wasn't renewed. Um, 
but I'm, I'm predicting him, but I do think Tobias could do it on a crown sweep. I think Bradley Whitford has won this category before for Handmaid's Tale. They love him. He could easily do it. They love John Lithgow. He's won this category a couple times before for a couple different shows. He could do it. Um, Giancarlo Esposito, Mandalorian has tons of support. So like, it's, it's literally anyone's game. But for now, I'm sticking with uh, 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 Michael K. Williams. How about you, Rob? Isn't this category interesting? Because really, there is no front runner here. Um, and when I'm, you're looking at other people's predictions, I'm, I'm usually looking at this category first. So I'm just really curious to see what people are thinking. Um, I think Lovecraft Country is no longer really a thing anymore. Uh, and I'm sorry to say that about the show that people really love. I just think when HBO decided not to renew that, that was obviously before voting has, will, will have started for this. Uh, I just think that it will probably um, affect his chances. I, I really honestly think that Tobias Menzies should just be a walk in the park, like all his other co-stars in other categories. I think he's probably actually the one that has to be slightly more concerned about his chances compared to all the others, which is a really odd thing because he's the only Crown nominee in this category. And then Giancarlo Esposito, we all can remember when Aaron Paul beat him the first time and we really honestly believe that Gus Fring was going to propel him to that win. And I just think this could be a makeup for Giancarlo Esposito and a way to reward the Mandalorian on the big night. So for me at the moment, I'm going with either him, Giancarlo Esposito, either T Tobias Menzies or my current number one choice, which is O.T. Fag Benway. Um, again, it's only, maybe because I'm a little biased, but when I saw his performance in season four of The Handmaid's Tale, I was completely blown away. Um, I've never seen him like that before. There was a lot of crying. There was a lot of heartfelt moments. There was a lot of guilt. There was just so much nuance to his performance. Again, I sound hyperbolic, I know, but um, I, I really believe that O.T. could be the one to take it out for The Handmaid's Tale. Well, after that hot take, what do you think, Marcus? Um, I'm looking for Justin Hartley's name. Where is yeah, where is that? I don't what understand. Is, what is going I, on? I don't get that. Like, I mean, not, not, not to slight Chris Sullivan at all, but it feels like they're going out of their way not to nominate Justin Hartley when they nominate uh, his brother-in-law on the show twice, but never yeah. him. Well, so frustrating. Justin will have one more year. This Is Us has one more year left, so fingers crossed next year. But <laughs> back to who is nominated. Um, I feel like in the past few months, this race has, the momentum has shifted to Michael K. Williams. I feel like it was more open and fluid a few months ago, but now, I mean, I'm mm -hmm. looking at the odds. Michael has 1,200 votes. In second place, Tobias has 200 votes. So the website, you know, the users, the experts, the editors. And we are never wrong. <laughs> no, but, the, but the momentum is, is going one way. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the way it's going. I would love if Giancarlo won this. I would love if, if uh, John Lithgow won. I mean, John Lithgow, he's John Lithgow, I think. Uh, he, he's one of the greatest people alive. Um, but I'm going to stick with Michael K. Williams. Uh, yeah, it's it's. I won't be surprised by any name that's announced when the envelope opens. Uh, I am heartened by the love for Lovecraft Country, uh, particularly in the actors branch. It's nominated in every single uh, uh, regular acting category, plus one of the two guest categories. Uh, so voters did watch it and they did like it, um, and they did embrace it, even though it aired so long ago. Um, so uh, that's where I'm sticking with now. Um, and that's where we're going to leave this now for our best uh, uh, drama series and drama categories conversation. Um, uh, thank you so much for, for joining us and make your predictions at Gold Derby and prove us wrong because one of you probably will. 